Kits this morning. I'm Rob Parker from Peach Software and this is our tutorial series. So just a brief explanation. Kits are where you have a part number which consists of a bunch of components that are in your stock and you can sell that part number. You can also sell the components separately but when you sell the part number or the kit as we call it, it takes the components out of stock or you can actually manufacture the kit uh, using the components and put that on your shelf as extra stock. Now depending on your settings, uh, the kit can be manufactured as you do the invoice. In other words, the components get taken out of stock as you invoice the kit part number or you can do a kit manufacture which means you can build 20 or 30 kits and it will take the components out of stock at that point in time and put the actual kits into stock. Now depending on your settings also when you sell a kit uh, if you have stock of the kit, let's say you have five in stock and you get an order for ten, when you invoice the ten, it can take the five off the shelf, manufacture another five on the fly for you, or you can do the kit manufacture for the five and then sell the ten straight off the shelf. And maybe you've seen in one of my previous videos that now we have the option of being able to customise a kit as we sell it. So what happens there is you sell the kit and you can change the components on the fly during the invoice and those actual components are recorded against that invoice and the correct cost. Then next time you sell the kit it goes back to its standard form. So in setup options here you have a few options. Uh, you got kit update from invoice that means that it's going to manufacture the kit when you invoice it and the components are going to be built or taken out of stock on the fly. The second option here, update all consignment areas. So if you move a kit from one consignment area to another, it can build it on the move, uh, or uh, you can untick that and it'll just move the kit part number from area to area. So that's multiple uh, consignment areas or branches, so to speak. Uh, you can use that. Uh, and the other option there is auto kit update only of zero stock. So where you've manufactured the kit and you've put it on in your stock, you've got it on the shelf. Uh, so if, for example, you, you sell more than what you've got on the shelf, it will manufacture the balance for you, uh, taking the components out of stock and building the kits on the fly. So that's another option. If you never want the kits to build on the fly, then you'll have both of those ticks turned off uh, and uh, you'll have to then manufacture them manually. So if you invoice a kit that's not in stock in that case, the stock for the kit will go into negative until you build more, more kits and it'll take the components out and put the stock of the kit back into positive territory. Just one more feature I want to show you. If you go to the product settings here, uh, you can see add kit usage to 24 months sales report. So basically you can either just see the sales report for the kits or you can see it for the components as well. Uh, quite often uh, you may want to reorder the components, not the kits. So you need to have the components in your usage. And last but not least, uh, in your pricing settings, it's good to have the kits use the average cost to build the kit. Uh, so what happens now in uh, V12 is when you invoice a kit, uh, it will calculate the cost of the components on the fly and that will be what the cost of goods sold is for that transaction. So it's better if you have this ticked so that the cost of the kit is based on the cost of the, the average cost of the components, not the last cost. Uh, that will keep your, uh, your cost updated properly and make sure the COGS is correct. So let me just show you a new feature we've put in the system. So if we're doing an invoice, for example, so we just open up the invoice screen, put in a customer. Once we've got the customer loaded, as you know, the cursor will be up here, but you can switch it to here just hitting the F4 key. That takes you straight onto the first line. Uh, so now, if we're invoicing a kit now, uh, now there's a shortcut there, which I think I've shown you in another video, but let's just uh, review that. It'll show you what's in the kit. And at this point, if you wanted to, you could change what's in the kit. So I could change that to two of those. Uh, and also it tells you maximum number of kits that you can build with the components that are available. So that's a new feature. And now that I've changed that kit on the fly, that will change for this transaction only. Next time I sell this kit, it'll go back to what the original design was. So okay to that. Uh, also in product control, 
uh, we've added a new feature. If I look up a kit in product control, you see now there's a little kit box. So if we click on that, it shows us what components are in that kit. Uh, we're not going to change it there. Uh, and also we have a kit commonality, so that'll tell us what kits this is a component of, if any. So let's have a look at that. If I just quickly uh, copy one of these part numbers, I'll just go into the short form product lookup. I'll copy that part number. And then I'll go back into product control and paste it in there. Enter. Okay, so now it says this is a kit part. And if I look in there, it tells us what uh, you can see the commonality is highlighted and it tells us which kit this is a component for. So that's a new feature in Peach and a really good one. I was really pleased to see that coming from the developers. So there, that's what I have for you today. That's about kits. A bit of a uh, quick review, uh, but I'm sure you'll find it uh, interesting. And uh, if you need to change any of those settings that I mentioned at the start of the video, please give us a call first. Only too pleased to help you out with that and give you some advice. Thanks for watching. Rob Parker, Peach Software. Thank you very much.